I want to talk a little bit about uh, the overrides that you see here in the uh, global render values and also a little bit more about the PAT volume itself. So, currently the particles that we're getting are white and they're white because they don't have a defined color from the origin. For example, if you are rendering X particles, X particles will typically default to green color because that's the color that they ship with, but you can switch it to pretty much anything, gradients and various sources. So, um, in this case, when we don't know what the color of a particle is, when it gets generated, we assume that it's white by default, so it renders nicely. If it was black, you wouldn't see it, so that's not good. But you can also go and override it per object. So if you had two objects, two Buddha statues, and you want to render uh, both, and let's say I create a clone to the site, and I want this one to be red and the other one to be white as it was, I can change the color to red and the other one will be kept white. Um, I'll be rendering uh, now in particle mode but with less particles so it will be a little bit um, ugly. That means um, I'm generating two objects that have uh, only 700 uh, something, a thousand particles. But you can still uh, see enough in this case how the light is penetrating uh, the volume and casting the volumetric shadows and this one is now red because I overwrote its settings per object. If at this point I decide that I actually want to um, actually render the whole scene with a yellow color, I don't want to go to every PT volume that exists in the scene or every particle source for that matter. I can just override the color globally for the scene uh, once and go and say, okay, this is the color that I want to render everything with uh, because that's what I need at this point. Or I might want a black and white rendering as a quick reference. Uh, ignoring all the textures and all the channels and everything that uh, I might be doing there. So this override is there in order to give you quickly a single color for the whole scene uh, in cases where you need it. Most of the time you'll be specifying the color per object one way or another. And here is another way to specify it. Here is the first uh, PT volume that we have. Let's say that we want to use one of the tags that we have to copy a channel from an existing channel and you see the existing channels actually listed underneath in the tag, you'll see that we have density, sign distance, sign distance gradient, normal, and position. I'll grab the normal, it already is uh, predefined on the list because it's a typical channel that we use, and I'll copy that one into color. And if we take a look in the viewport, we already have the normal as color there. And at this point, if I would render again um, without the overwrite in the render settings, because I, I checked the yellow, this one now gets the normal color and this one gets the color from the base object. Obviously, if that uh, um, tag was added to this object, the base color was red, but we added normal override on top. So we are uh, stacking information on top. And in this case, we said we don't care about that red thing that came from the base object of the PT volume. We care about the normal, so that gets overwritten. If I wanted to scale something, for example, I can disable this tag, add the um, tag for scaling channels, go to color and say scale at 0 0.5, and you see that the color there became uh, darker. So uh, you can use the tags to get incoming data and modify it. Now it's a darker red. Um, you can uh, overwrite uh, for the whole scene, you can overwrite data as it's coming per channel uh, on the, I would call it stack in this case because I'm coming from previous max background, but basically in the pipeline of the object you can add your tags and modify the channels. And for the typical shading channels you have the overrides in the setup. So you can decide that uh, uh, the emission will be set to a different value than uh, typically, and then if you enable emission which I haven't enabled yet, but I can do that. Here we say use emission, and uh, at this point the emission of uh, the one of the objects that uh, uh, changed the settings there. You see now I have a green self-illuminated color mixed with the red, um, which looks like an ambient lighting in this case. So, um, we saw a little bit about the channel uh, copying and setting, and in fact I can use a set tag to completely override the whole thing again. If I put it behind all those guys, instead of getting the red color and then uh, we are not really overwriting it with the normals anymore uh, because I disabled that tag, 
but here I can come and say, set me please the color channel again. True, the particles now disappeared because the type of the channel uh, doesn't match. Uh, it should be a vector, but right now I'm setting it to float and it doesn't like that. So I say that will be a vector, and this vector will be cyan. Uh, 0, 1, 1, pretty much the color. And I can just click the numbers. They're not really here as colors, but you can use the set tag to set any of the channels to any value that makes sense. And in this case, I'm once again overwriting the color, but in a completely different way by actually setting a tag there to overwrite the color. And we we'll still see the green from the emission that is coming from underneath from this override. All right, so in the PRT volume itself, I'll delete this guy so we have one less object to, to actually render. In this object here, uh, let's take a look also at these settings. Uh, we have the reduce number of particles option, and that's an additional way to actually skip particles and render less, regardless of what the source is. All our particle sources have this slider, uh, and you can get all or skip every end particle. Uh, some of our uh, objects, like the PT loader, has its own controls for viewport and render to skip particles and no different fractions. But we'll have this control as a global one for any source. So if you need to render a fraction of the particles, you can do that. There is also a time offset here, but that doesn't apply to a PT volume. So we'll have to move to another scene which actually has particles that can be retimed, and we'll talk about it. Um, before we do that, let's make sure that we have discussed everything that is uh, to be seen here. Um, we saw about the jittering, and you can change the random seat and even keyframe the random seat to actually produce noise that is changing over time, so your particles don't land on the same place on each frame, if you need that. The well-distributed jittering is uh, disabled by default. If you enable it, it will create a better uh, random distribution, but it takes a little bit longer, uh, probably half a second or whatever, but still it has to generate some uh, distributions that are then tileable. That means when you put them side by side, there is no chance that two particles will come too close to each other, and it's better than just a uh, dumb uh, random distribution. We can enable a shell uh, to create particles only within a range from the surface, and uh, we have the viewport percent limit where we can, again, display a fraction of the particles, just like uh, that override that we saw in the setup, but this applies to rendering and viewport, and this one is only for viewport purposes. So if you have too many particles, you can always go and say, I don't want them all, I want to see only a fraction of them. And uh, you also have a limit that prevents it from going above currently 1 million particles, 1,000 times 1,000. Uh, so if I try to create 5,000 particles, it will stop at 1,000 and won't continue. Uh, that would be the case if I enable this and start incrementing here and going down with the size, at some point it, you'll see that uh, particles start disappearing from the back because it's going front to back and creating more and more particles. You're on a small dose right now. When it reaches 1 million, it just stops. If I increase this one to 2 million, it's going to draw uh, 2 million and then stop. But this is for speed reasons. We don't want to. This is only 1,000 particles, the first 1,000 particles that were generated. All right. Uh, and the other thing um, we, is obviously the display. So I'm going to uh, disable this limit here and say display me the normals. And now I see actual vectors that show from the surface. Yeah, I could color them as we saw. Uh, just copy them into the color channel and still get a good idea what's where. Um, in the uh, mesh source, you'll notice that we also have the ability to select from the scene or from file. I could switch to file mode and go and look for some OBJ file. I have some here under my uh, 3ds Max export folder. I have some OBJs. And let's say I have a hairy bunny uh, OBJ here. Um, and I'll display this one as uh, small dots. And uh, in this OBJ here, uh, I'm currently using an external file uh, to distribute the particles. And I can switch again to scene and it will create again the Buddha. So uh, you can keep your mesh external to the scene if it's millions of polygons, if you don't want to put it inside your uh, Cinema 4D scene, you can keep it as external object and Crypto will still grab that OBJ or XMesh. Uh, and um, XMesh is our own uh, mesh format. So we have a plugin that exports out of Max and Maya. Eventually might come to Cinema 4D someday. And uh, basically, you can uh, do the repopulation on those external meshes. 
And we also have the option for the world space, which is important to mention. Um, when this is unchecked, I can grab my uh, PT volume as it is, and I can move it around. And even though the mesh, the source mesh is here, I can uh, move, rotate, and scale my uh, PT volume as I want. So if I want to have multiple PT volumes using the same source, uh, this is then possible. But if I want these particles to follow this mesh, and the mesh is probably animated, deformed, and has bent and twists, or uh, character animation, skin, and so on, and I want my particles to always populate inside, I can just check the option that says world space, and now my particles are inside that one, and it will always follow the mesh. So if I select the mesh and move it around, the particles will also come with it. 